Howdy friends, Retro Ren here. I thought I'd do a video today that's a little bit different from my typical format. Instead of playing any games, I thought I'd talk about one that I've been getting into here in the year 2022. It's not a video game, and in fact, even though I'd never played it before, it's been around for decades now and has had a significant impact in my personal life. That game is Yu-Gi-Oh! So sit back, grab some popcorn, and let's take a deep dive into the Shadow Realm as I explain how this game has affected my life. Back in third grade, it had to have been 2002 or 2003, I remember trends going around in the lunchroom such as using green ketchup and purple mustard, listening to 50 Cent songs, and trading Game Boy cartridges around. One such trade involved myself offering my Link's Awakening to a friend for a copy of Pokemon Crystal. You'd think that deal would be great, but seeing as how I owned a Game Boy Pocket, which can't play said game to it only being compatible with the Game Boy Color, I lost out on that one. Anyways, the biggest trend I can remember at the time were Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Everyone was playing the game, before school in the cafeteria, at recess, and even at each other's houses after the bell rang. I seriously don't know how I missed out on this craze, but if I had to attribute a couple reasons to this, it would have to be that I was preoccupied with video games such as Tony Hawk and WWE titles, and also, I was pretty easily distracted, and my kid's brain was too dumb to understand many of the rules and mechanics that were involved with Yu-Gi-Oh. I did watch a bit of the TV show on Toonami, and was surprised by what I saw, it was entertaining, but in terms of the trading card games, I was personally more into Magic, The Gathering, and Pokemon. Even though a game like Magic could be considered a lot more complicated compared to some, there's something about Yu-Gi-Oh that just made the game unfathomable to me. I'd see my friends lay out a giant mat with a grid for playing cards face up or face down on. I'd see massive spell chains, one after the other, being broken down in order. I'd even see calculators being used outside of the classroom to calculate large sums of damage. As a result of this, I never looked much further than that, avoiding it entirely until I turned 28. Before we zip to the year 2022, I'd like to tell the story of how I met my best friend thanks to Yu-Gi-Oh! My classmate Johnny was really into collecting the cards and was always looking to duel. He was a nice kid, but was sort of antisocial like I am and he got made fun of for having a lisp. Even though I never experienced something like this at that point in my life, I found out that his father had passed away just a week prior to me meeting him. I felt terrible for him and I wanted to do what I could to help him get his mind off of things for a brief moment. So my mom and I took a trip up to Kmart, that's right, the ancient dinosaur retail store known as Kmart and found the biggest box of Yu-Gi-Oh cards that we could get our hands on. I mean one of those giant chests that have a lot of cards in them. I brought them to lunch for him to open up and for us to sift through, him reading all the cards effects and myself admiring all the awesome illustrations. Almost 20 years later, we are best friends to this day. My brother married his sister, his mom was named to be my godmother, I was there for him when his dad left this earth and he was there for me when my mom died. One day we were messing around with Tabletop Simulator on Steam, which is an excellent medium for enjoying almost any board and card game imaginable through digital means over the internet with your friends. We decided to download a mod that allowed us to play with some Yu-Gi-Oh starter decks, and over the course of the next few hours he showed me how to play the game, clunkiness willing. I'm not going to explain every rule, but just the basics, so bear with me here. Each duelist starts out with five cards in their hands, and they can be of many different types, such as traps, spells, monsters, and usually a variation of those things in between. Each monster has an attack and defense rating. Sometimes they might also come with an effect that can be activated and gives the player some sort of advantage. You can position these monsters on the playing field to determine if they are going to be in an offensive or defensive mode, which uses their rating to determine whether or not they will live through the battle. Excess damage can go through an attacking monster if it's killed, and that difference can be subtracted from the duelist's life points, or LP. If a monster is in defensive positioning and is killed, the excess damage does not roll through to the player's life points. Numerous spell cards can be used to change the tide of a battle, such as the Dark Hole, 
which completely clears the board of all monsters. Spell cards can also be used to restore life points or resurrect monsters that have been defeated and sent to the graveyard. There are also trap cards, which are placed in the bottom row of the playing field and can be revealed at certain times, such as when your opponent declares a battle, in which you may catch them off guard with a detrimental effect. Once a player loses all 8,000 life points, they lose the duel. There's a lot more to this game that I could put into words for a short video, but it's a lot better than I remember, and I'm kind of sad that I missed out on it throughout my childhood. Better late than ever, they say. Fortunately, there are a great many ways to enjoy the game now, such as on the Nintendo DS, the PlayStation 2, or through the game I've been playing here on the PC called Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution. I've always been a huge fan of these sorts of games as they aren't riddled with microtransactions. You can earn every card in the game through playing single and multiplayer battles, then build up your own custom deck from scratch. It takes away from the thrill of pulling a physical card out of a booster pack, but it's a lot easier on the wallet, especially these days. This title also has a pretty extensive tutorial, as long as it doesn't crash on you, and a neat story mode where you can play through each of the arcs in the anime. I even got to duel with and win my first battle against my longtime foe, Johnny. <laughs> good game. Was, yeah, good, good game. game. That's close. And that's the story of how we went from best friends to best duelists. Hey, thanks for sticking around to hear my story. I really appreciate your time. If you found it at all entertaining, please take a split second and a small mouse click to hit the like button and maybe subscribe if you'd like to see videos similar to this. I enjoy doing top 10 videos, reviews, and also posting silly videos of my friends and I farting around on some games, whether they're new or retro. Be sure to check out some of my other videos listed here. Alright, I'll let you go for now. Take care of yourselves everyone. Bye.